Good morning. My name is Yanmi Escobar. I was born in El Salvador. By age four, my parents had immigrated to the U.S. to look for work and a better life. By age five, my parents had brought my two sisters and I to live in Providence, Rhode Island. When my parents separated, my mother brought my two sisters and my younger brother to live in Washington, D.C. We moved to the Columbia Heights Northwest area, where today is an up-and-coming neighborhood being built with condominiums and a small shopping center. There are many changes being made today across the city. Schools are being remodeled and public charter schools are becoming more popular. The level of education is being improved. But it was not always this way. Growing up in DC as a teenager, it was difficult for me. I attended Cadoza Senior High School, which at the time was rated one of the worst high schools in Washington, DC. The Columbia Heights area was an empty lot, which became a hangout area after school for students and small gangs or cliques that had formed. Gangs formed in all nearby neighborhoods and were noticeable in schools. During my four years at Cardoso, I made the best effort I could to rise above the, all the negativity around me. I kept myself busy with many programs. I joined programs like JRTC and debate. I participated in various sports such as soccer, softball, and track. It was easy to see the differences in the city, especially how the level of education and the athletic programs differed from other schools in the city. There were different leagues because there was a lack of funding and, and, urban, and training in urban neighborhoods. I found that Cardozo had some very amazing teachers who were supportive and who truly loved teaching. I also found that not all staff was the same. For example, during my junior year, I was stopped in the hall by my counselor, who blatantly asked me why I was applying to so many colleges because I wasn't going to get in. I was shocked that she would tell me this in the hall in front of my peers. During high school, I was pregnant and had a son during the summer of right before my senior year. I knew at the moment that my life would change and that my priorities would take a huge shift. Becoming a mother meant I was no longer my number one priority. Every decision I made had to not only work for me, but had to be the best decision for my son. After high school, I was prepared for college and I was accepted to many of the colleges that I applied to, but I could not afford to go because I was not eligible for financial aid due to my immigrational status. While I attempted to attend multiple colleges, I also had to work to provide for my family. And so, like so many young people in my community, my line of dead-end jobs began. But after I lost my job in 2011, I was at a standstill in my life. I had a son to care for, but had no job and was not receiving an education. My sister Oneida had been telling me about this great program called JROP that she had just completed in Rhode Island where I would get six months training and six months in an internship. During the program, I was taught the IT skills necessary to enter an entry-level IT position. <coughs> I'm sorry. I also received credits to Northern Virginia Community College. My opportunities had once again opened, and today I feel much more confident about my future. I'm currently at a contract help desk position at the law firm Baker McKenzie. <laughs> and will be enrolling back in NOVA in the spring to continue my education. Today, I am writing my own story.